we are tracking for you today on ET Now. Let's kick start the money show and welcome on board Hemant Ristagi uh, to talk about our very first topic and that is on retirement and prepping for it. Mr. Ristagi, thanks so much for joining us today on ET Now. So if you've heard my introduction, you will completely agree with me and I think the last two years, one and a half year has been a testament to the fact that the world changes at a very, very rapid pace. Disruption is always around the corner. It will spring on you, at, you know, as a surprise when you're least expecting it. So what I'm trying to say is that there's less and less predictability on how our lifestyle will be going forward because of a variety of reasons. In such a scenario, what should especially the young ones, you know, the 20s, 30s, the Gen Zs and millennials keep in mind with respect to retirement when they will attain that age of 65, 70? Well, Bhavina, I think first of all, uh, anyone who wants to plan for retirement has to realize that retirement planning is an important goal for all of us. And there are two primary reasons for that. One is, it's usually a long-term goal. And second, it requires us to create a large corpus. Unfortunately, many of us often get overwhelmed when it comes to talking about retirement or to, to plan for it. That's the reason why we see in our country there are very few people who actually plan for retirement the way they need to. Uh, see, the point is that why retirement is important? Because you're talking about a goal which may be 15, 20, 25 years from now. Which means that this you're talking about a period of life where you will not be earning, maybe not earning anything, but your expenses will continue. So how do you make sure that you have worked so hard all your life to earn whatever you want? You need to ascertain that the money that you have at the time of retirement is enough, large enough for you to have a comfortable life. Which means that you need to plan for your retirement. And I think one of the major advantages of planning for retirement is that it tells you today what you need to do to lead a comfortable retirement life, maybe after 20, 25, 30 years. So there are two, three factors that each can be looked at. You talked about, uh, you know, youngsters, I mean, uh, or, or for that matter, anyone who's planning for, for retirement. One is you need to decide when you plan to retire. Now, if let's talk about someone who is 30 year old. If one has to go by conventional uh, retirement age, which is, let's say, 60, so this person has around 30 years to retire. We often hear people talking about saying, I want to retire early. So let's talk about the same 30-year-old who wants to retire after 15 years, let's say at the age of 45. So this person has to realize that he has only 15 years to build the retirement corpus. And if you were to add other responsibilities or liabilities that you may have, for maybe providing for children education, for buying a house, the amount required would be much more. So that's why, you know, retiring early can be a little tricky. So the important thing is to, be, to decide when is that you want to decide. Second is, how much money, as you rightly mentioned, to decide how much money would be enough for me. So that's when I think we need to consider inflation. Uh, we can understand this by, you know, a simple example here. Let's say if somebody has an expenses of 20,000 rupees today, I'm talking about monthly expenses. And if this person were to retire, let's say, 30 years from now, considering uh, an inflation of 7%, and also considering the fact that the lifestyle remains the same, which obviously is not going to happen, because as our income go up, lifestyle changes, expenses will go up. But just to understand this concept, let's assume that expenses, that the standard of living remains the same. The expenses after 30 years would be around 153,000. Okay, so you can see that how much would be required. Now, if I assume that, I, you know, this person can make 6% post-tax, post-retirement. This person will need around three and a half crore corpus. And to get there in the next 30 years, this person needs to invest 10,000 rupees per month, assuming that this entire portfolio is being invested in equity and I'm assuming an uh, annualized return of 12%. So this is the way one has to plan. Assume first, when you want to plan, how much money would be required, consider inflation, and then assume a rate of return and work out how much money would be required when you retire. So I think these are primarily two important things that everyone should look at, plan for it, focus on these two factors, and of course then comes how do you generate that 12%, which means that you need to build a portfolio that has the potential to provide you positive real rate of return, which is gross return minus inflation minus taxes has to be positive. Okay. All right. Uh, well, that's of course uh, about retirement, and you know, essentially, you have to think about think about it like this: that you will be uh, at a time when you will not have the income that you are earning today. 
So in such a situation, what will be your financial position? How will you cater to all of your needs and requirements? That's one way of looking at it. Now, Mr. Rustagi, I know you briefly alluded to this in your earlier point, but really how this question that we get a lot of times from especially our young audience is that, oh, I'm 22, do I really need to start thinking about retirement or should I think about my other goals like, you know, buying a car and buying a house or even for that matter, taking a holiday? And I totally understand. I mean, frankly, even I would be interested in more, uh, interested more in my next holiday rather than my retirement which is 30 years later. So how early is it to start thinking about retirement? Well, Mubina, I agree with you. Many of us think like that. Unfortunately, you know, not many of us think about retirement and I'm talking about both mentally, mentally as well as financially. But the thing is that as I mentioned earlier, if you plan for your, your, your investment, even for retirement, even at a young age, uh, you know, you can actually go for your vacation and you can also plan for retirement. It's not really that you need to really compromise on something. I think that it's a very, very important question as to how early should I begin. You know, my advice always would be that you can plan as early as possible. The reason being that we need to realize that every 10 years you delay your retirement, retirement planning, you need to invest three times to catch up. Now, let's take the same example that I mentioned about earlier. Then, as I said, suppose somebody has to generate uh, a corpus of three and a half crore over the next 30 years. Okay, and assuming an annualized return of uh, 12%, we found that he has to invest 10,000 rupees. Now, let's say that the retirement will happen when it has to happen 30 years from now. And this process of investment is delayed by, let's say, 10 years. So, this person will have around 20 years to build that corpus, 10 years less than what the other person had. So, in 20 years, I assume the same rate of return, which is 12%, I will have to invest 35,000 to get to a corpus of three and a half crores. As you can see, more than three times is what I need to invest to do catch up. So I think it's very, very important to start investing early. While I agree that, you know, when we discuss some numbers, it, it, it sounds simpler than it actually is. It can be a little complicated for any youngster to figure out how much money would be required. But I think there is no harm. In fact, it's always a good idea to start investing, keeping some money aside. Whatever little you can save, at least start that process that you, you can benefit for power of compounding. As the time goes by, you know, you can then get a fix on how much you need and you can plan properly. But I think it, it definitely makes sense to start investing as early as possible. And as I said, if you plan it well, you will not have to compromise on any of your goals. Okay, so even if you're young, start uh, putting aside little by little. It's not very difficult, you know. Start off small if you want, if you still feel, you know, you have other uh, activities that you'd rather save and spend for. Um, but yeah, start off small and eventually you can keep increasing that amount. So Mr. Rustagi, the question is, that money that I save, uh, where should I invest it? Uh, that retirement corpus which I will slowly build, uh, you know, it will only keep increasing, right, as I keep earning my money. How should I invest it then? I think again, Mubina, a very, very important question. Having uh, realized, okay, when I want to retire, how much money I need after retirement, the key is how do I generate the return of 12% or 10%, uh, whichever I've assumed in my calculation. I think it's again very, very important to really work out your asset allocation well. Now, asset allocation basically allows you to divide your money into different asset classes based on your time horizon. So someone, as you mentioned about mm -hmm. someone who's 30 year old, the focus can be primarily on equity, uh, well, of course, one can question the fact that why should I invest all my money into equity in, uh, for a group for, for retirement planning. The thing is that you are in your accumulation phase and your focus really has to be on, on growth. Overall asset allocation in any case will work out because you're looking at some other goals to be, uh, you know, achieved in short term and medium term. But as well as if you have enough time on hand, your focus should be on equity, even if it is not 100%, but a significant amount of your portfolio should be should be in equity, and I think that's where the time horizon plays an important role. Here again, I will take an extension of the same uh, example that I gave, that if someone has 30 years to accumulate 3.5 crore, as I mentioned about assumption rate of return presumption was 12%, if you actually earn only 6%, right, you will have to invest 35,000 rupees to get to 3.5 crore as against 10,000 rupees. So we need to understand the difference that a good asset allocation can make, uh, depending on when you start planning for it, either you can go for equity oriented or you can go for equity oriented hybrid fund or other hybrid funds. The problem is many times we focus only on EPF, EPF or very conservative portfolios. Well, I agree that, you know, one, more, one is usually worried about safety of the capital, but for a long term goal portfolio like 
uh, retirement planning, don't ever forget that inflation is a bigger risk than risk of losing capital because you won't lose capital when you're investing for 10, 15, 20 years. So important is consider inflation, consider your asset allocation, go for a portfolio which has a significant sizable exposure to equity so that even with a smaller sum, you can achieve your target of creating a large corpus that you have set out to. All right. Okay, you know, um, looking beyond equities, etc., the a little bit of retirement planning is also done by our employer and by the government too. This in the form of EPF, uh, you know, PPF as well if we contribute, and then you have also uh, again NPS, which is again a government um, scheme. How do you view all of these uh, fixed income, very fixed income schemes? Um, that have the government backing too uh, and does it make sense to start uh, investing in these from a retirement point of view above and beyond what the government and you know employer already does on behalf of us do you think you should go a little more in terms of exposure in these uh, schemes especially because they are fixed income well, the thing is that for salary class I think you know EPF at least will have a role to play in any case uh, because uh, employees will contribute and you will also contribute to EPF and, and of course, for self-employed, they have an option to look at either NPS or other options. So clearly, I think what we need to see is, for example, currently, if you see uh, and, uh, EPF is giving, uh, let's say, rate of interest is around eight and a half percent. But I think someone who is in the uh, higher tax bracket has has the option also to, to whether to go for an EPF or not. There, I think we need to remember the new rule that has changed now that any contribution of yours which is beyond two and a half lakh where interest on that is taxable. So I think it's important to even consider that. NPS allows you to invest in corporate bonds, government securities and equities, but unless and until you build a portfolio where you have a decent exposure to equity in NPS, you will again struggle to get a return which is better than EPF. So I think again, here again, uh, the asset allocation uh, will play an important role, but the only problem that I have is with NPS is that there is a mandatory, uh, you know, annuity of on, on 40 percent of your accumulated corpus. Now, what happens that I still believe that that makes you compromise at the time when you need your need to enhance your income, because uh, rate of annuity that you get is usually very low and it's also taxable. So I think that's the drawback that uh, you know NPS still has. But like I said, for salaried class, EPF definitely certainly will have a role to play. But relying only on that uh, to build the retirement corpus may not be the right strategy because as we saw. You have to make your money grow at, at a much healthier rate compared to what you get from EPF. Exactly, I think that's crucial, that's the key. Um, so, you know, just some closing comments, Mr. Rustagi. Uh, right now, you're 30, let's assume, or 25, and you're putting money aside. But as you grow older, let's talk about those individuals who are 45, 50. Uh, right now, what you've explained, uh, you know, has got to do a lot from the perspective of somebody younger. Uh, how should someone at 50, 55 look at their investments from the point of view of looking at retirement coming forward in the near, medium term? I think some part of what I said about, about young people will remain the same here. I think if, if someone realizes at the age of 40, 45, or maybe at 50, that maybe I have not been planning the way I ought to have been planning for retirement planning, it, it's important to take stock. It's always pays to start investing early, but if you haven't, uh, you know, any time you realize is the right time for you to really take stock. So first thing we need to see is to where my money is being invested. Second is again ascertain how much would I need after retirement. Figure out where the gaps are. And if you have been investing very heavily into conservative investment options, like I mentioned earlier, you need to start looking at market like product. For example, good thing is that uh, if you include mutual fund in your portfolio, uh, apart from equity fund, there are also hybrid funds, which are, you know, equity rental hybrid fund, which invests around 65% in equity and the rest in debt. And there are other category of funds, balance advantage, equity saving, with varying degree of exposure to equity. I think it's important to include those depending on how many years you still have uh, to your retirement. But it's important to take stock of it, see where your investments are happening, where the gaps are, what is that you need to accumulate from here on, and then choose your investment option. Like I mentioned earlier, it's very, very important to ascertain how much you need and it's equally important to ensure that you have built the right kind of portfolio with the ideal asset allocation to get there. All right. Uh, well, there you have it. That's, of course, uh, to do everything to do with uh, retirement and how you can brace yourself, uh, prepare yourself as well for an event like that. 
On that note, uh, let me tell our viewers that uh, you can connect with us uh, on our email address, the money show at etnow.tv. Send in questions and queries, and we'll get those answered. So for now, let's take on board our first question, some questions that we already got uh, from Ganesh. He says, what happens to my investments in mutual funds if I'm going to move to the U.S.? Because I've been investing for the last seven years. I have almost 10 lakh rupees in different mutual funds. I have stopped the SIPs last year, but can I continue holding them even after I move? So I think the fact that he's saying move, which means that it's, it's going to be a bit more of a permanent shift in residency. So then he will attain NRI status. Uh, what happens then, Mr. Rustagi? Can he continue holding on to his mutual funds? I'm not sure why he stopped his SIPs. He, he, I mean, could he even continue doing his SIPs actually if his in income continues to stay put? Yes, obviously we don't know the reason why he, he you know, stopped SIP, but as far as his current investments are concerned, even if he decides to move to US, he can continue to hold on to these investments because that's investment that is already made here. One, the second is what he needs to do is to change his KYC status to NRI uh, or, or, you know, inform the mutual fund that my KYC status has changed once he has done that. Accordingly, the changes will be made and he can continue to hold on to his investment. He may not really sell his investment just because it's moving to US. Okay, understood. Let's take on board our next question, which is coming in from Senthil. He says, please advise whether fixed deposits in PNB housing finance, LIC housing finance companies are safe. They are public sector undertakings. They have AAA ratings. I think you've got a valid point there. And also, what do you think of FDs in Mahindra Finance, Bajaj Finance? They are also AAA rated entities. In general, uh, Mr. Rustagi, what's your take on, uh, you know, fixed deposits with corporates? I understand why uh, viewers like Senthil would be lured because they always tend to offer sometimes 2 and 3 percentage points better returns than what a bank or a financial institution offers. So I understand why he is lured. But if you could uh, advise on, you know, the fact that they have AAA rated, um, you know, ratings uh, and some of them like LIC and uh, PNB housing are government entities too. So do they offer m more safety against any possible credit risk? Well, Mabina, usually speaking, when you talk about any organization, public or private, uh, triple A, usually speaking, you know, you can consider them to be a safe investment. But I think that's one aspect of investment that we are looking at. You also need to make sure that there is still a risk of giving your money to one entity as compared to, if you were to compare this with, let's say, a well diversified debt fund, which will have maybe 40, 50 security. So even if there is a default somewhere, you know that all your money is not at risk. So I think that's something that we need to remember. There are a couple of other factors that I would like every investor to remember when you're taking an investment decision. One is what is the rate of interest you're getting and how efficient uh, the return is in terms of taxation. Now, these are all we know that, uh, you know, will be taxed. So if it is taxed, then if I were to compare again with the market link product of mutual fund, I'm talking about even an option like equity saving, which invests only 15-20% in equity and the rest in arbitrage and debt and balance advantage fund. If I do a mix of these, uh, I can get not only higher pre-tax but also higher post-tax return. Third is also you need to look at what is the level of liquidity, what's the level of transparency. I think these are three or four factors that I need to look at. By just looking at gross return, if I make my decision, and if I'm paying tax at a higher rate, obviously, uh, you know, I'm going to struggle to beat inflation over a longer period. So I think the key is any investment, you may be investing today for two or three years, but actually we don't require money for a longer period. First thing, keep that in mind. Second is always consider inflation as a risk and look for option which provide you the potential to get positive real rate, of, real rate of return, of course, you need to keep your risk profile in mind. I'm not saying that put all your money there, but keep these factors in mind before you decide whether you should be opting for an FD, triple A FD or not. Okay. Our next question is from Siddharth Mishra. He says, my parents are in their 70s and pension holders and I'm investing some of their fixed deposits into debt funds with the objective that their, the returns would beat inflation and the diminishing fixed deposit interest. I primarily focused on one to three year duration and high credit rating funds. Um, so he's uh, given some of the funds. Uh, there's SBI medium duration quota corporate fund. HDFC uh, short term debt, HDFC corporate bond, Franklin low duration, Franklin short term, Birla low duration, Kotak low duration, ICSA savings, access treasury and access short. Um, 
further he also says that his parents fall into the highest tax bracket because of the fixed deposit and pension income uh, but he's also worried because of the recent credit events with Vodafone and Yes Bank and the drawdown in Franklin Mutual Funds so he wants to know what do you think of his portfolio and also he says he needs to make 10 lakhs of fresh investments into secured debt funds he's asking if you consider PSU funds or dynamic bond or gilt funds um, they don't need this money for at least 5 years so I'm glad that you know Siddhartha is taking upon himself uh, the mantle to really ensure that his parents are getting the most and yeah fixed deposits are definitely not going to cut it because you know inflation itself is almost 6% what do you think of his uh, fund selection he's got those Franklin funds but I think slowly the money is starting to trickle in over there for the unit holders uh, and where can he deploy the extra 10 lakh rupees well Mubina if I were to really analyze his current portfolio he's also talked about a time horizon being 1 to 3 years and he's also mentioned that the both, both parents are actually in the highest tax bracket now there are two three important things to remember here if I look at his portfolio there are four funds in the category of low duration now these are obviously a fund where you will see maybe a less amount of volatility as compared to uh, uh, the longer duration debt fund but the fact is you're also going to uh, you know struggle to beat inflation because these are ideally for parking short term investment not for a slightly longer term duration second is he said about time horizon of one to three years that's where i think each one of us need to be very careful any debt investment that you redeem within three years okay will be added any gain will be added to your income and because parents belong to the highest tax uh, tax slab they will have to pay tax at the highest tax uh, slab so which means that the post tax return is going to be very very low i think these are two factors that everyone should remember that's exactly the reason why even earlier in the show i mentioned about that investors should start looking at you know hybrid funds especially the ones that allow you to claim the taxation of equity fund like equity saving and balance advantage where the total of arbit you know arbitrage and equity is more than 65% now what happens here is after one year the long term the gain become long term capital gain and it's only taxable at 10% so clearly uh, there are benefits in terms of potential of return here because he mentioned about time horizon of 5 years my advice definitely would be considering the fact that we may not see any rate cut from here we may see actually rates going up at some stage definitely over if, if the horizon is 5 years definitely going to happen uh, at, at some stage here so my advice would be that instead of looking at debt funds you should be looking at these two category of hybrid funds i think one he can earn higher return for his uh, parents but also the returns are going to be more tax efficient Well, I think that's all the time we have then to take on board some questions and queries. Uh, so, Mr. Ristagi, as always, really appreciate you giving us your time. Thanks so much for joining in on the Money Show.